senior seminar. All right, and what the senior seminar is what you gotta give some background. So you guys are juniors getting ready to be seniors. Okay, all right. Um, let me just give you a, a really brief, 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 brief background. I'm really from Chicago, Illinois. I did go to high school with this guest. We both graduated back in 97. See, I, that wasn't even called for. You know what I'm saying? You could have went whoop when you walked in and saw my suit. You could have went whoop. That's a bad suit. You didn't have to say, you didn't have to go whoop. That's a long time. <laughs> so 1997, you know? She did. Yeah, she flatlined back then. <laughs> 1997, man. Great year for us. We uh, went our separate ways. I went down to New Orleans at, at um, the University of New Orleans. I started out a chemistry education man, chemistry education. Um, the reason why I started out chemistry education because back then um, programs were really, now I'm not gonna say bad, but they were really intentional about weeding students out very quickly. And my dad was a guidance counselor in the high schools in Chicago, and he knew that colleges were doing this. And so when he told me, he was like, George, look, I hear you. You want to be a pharmacist, right? Sounds good. What you need to do is you need to major in chemistry education, something related to pharmacy. That way they'll put you in a track that's doable and reasonable and they won't give you like super hard classes. You know, because he was concerned, he, he had a lot of friends who sent their kids to college. They got in their like pre-pharmacy, pre-med track. Then they start taking the pharmacy physics and the pre-pharmacy physics and the medical physics. And it like blew their mind. Like you ever seen that AT&T commercial when the little girl says, what's infinity times infinity? And then he goes, <laughs> blew their mind, right? And so they had an I had an opportunity to go down chemistry education. Now, here's the beautiful thing about that. Out of all the students on Xavier University's campus, I was the only science education major. Just happened to be the only science education major. Because I was the only science education major, there was a guy who donated $10,000 a semester to go out to science education majors. Well, I'm the only one. So, by default, I get $10,000 a semester. Now, first lesson you got to learn. You can never say I can't afford to go to college. Why? Because your responsibility as a, a senior going into your freshman year of college is to say, I just got to get there. Right? I just got to get to college and trust that an opportunity is going to open up. You'll be amazed and how many people have similar stories like me? People who have just got there. They got to college, and as soon as they got to college, mind blowing, they got a scholarship. So the first two years were cool for me, right? I did all my prerequisites to get into pharmacy school. And then when I transferred into the College of Pharmacy, now my major changes, but I lose my scholarship. So this is when it gets difficult for me because I'm not science education anymore, I'm now a pharmacist. It's my major. The way Xavier works is, is you do two years undergrad, four years pharmacy school. So I'm in pharmacy school, curriculum's killing me, I'm getting my head blown, and um, struggle academically, right? First semester, failed horribly. I mean, horribly. I, I failed with honors. If you could fail and get honor cores, they would have given me honor cores. I failed that bad. Um, so they made me repeat some classes. I came back with a vengeance, did better. Cool, I'm on the right track. But still, financially now, I'm struggling because, you know, I don't have the scholarship money. So I end up having to pick up a couple jobs. I pick up two part-time pharmacy jobs working at Walgreens, one working at a couple of local hospitals. I work at Charity Hospital in New Orleans, Tulane Hospital in New Orleans, Oxner Hospital. I, you name a hospital in New Orleans, I was there like, let me get a couple hours because I wanted to stay in school. It was a value system that was put inside of me that I would be nothing without my education. So I had to finish, right, no matter what. So needless to say, grades continue to go up and down. Sad story, I ended up getting dismissed from Xavier's College of Pharmacy. What am I going to do now? Well, I've completed enough hours to be halfway, almost complete with a chemistry degree. So I ended up taking a year, going back, and finishing my chemistry degree. So I graduated from Xavier with a degree in chemistry, all right, and a minor in biology. Sounds pretty good, right? But it's still not my dream. So now i got to figure out how am I going to still be a pharmacist. <coughs> my wife, who was my girlfriend at the time, she finished pharmacy school in 2003. She moved back to Memphis, where she's from. She grew up in Whitehaven, went to Central High School. 
and um, she ends up practicing, right? So I periodically, I'm driving up here to visit her in my last year of school. Turns out I visit UT downtown, the Health Science Center, and I say, look, you know, I explain my whole story, man. I just want another chance. I've been out here grinding. I was working two, three jobs, blah, blah, blah. I, I'm like, pull out a violin. I'm like, you know, I'm the sorriest guy from the south side of Chicago. I just need another chance. Please give me another chance, man. Thankfully, they gave me another chance, right? So I'm like, cool. I got two years left. I'm going to bang out these two years. I'm going to graduate. Six figures is in my hand. So I go, I work, I work, I work. I'm still struggling academically. I'm barely making it, right? I'm barely making it. So I get to my last year of pharmacy school. I'm in my last year of classes. And I start noticing that academically I'm struggling so much and it's hard for me to stay focused on life. I cannot stay focused at all. I'm there for like, I'm in a big lecture hall of about 150 people in the college of pharmacy in a P3 class, which is P3, third year pharmacy students. I'm there with like, for at least a minimum, a maximum, I'm sorry, 15 minutes. 15 minutes on my attention span, I'm done. I got to go. I get up, walk out. I'm at the vending machine with no money to stand there. Why? Because I just, I got to do something else, right? So I end up going there, and I go down to student academic services, and I say, look, you know, something's wrong, right? I, I got to, everybody else is sitting for 45 minutes. I can't do it. They send me to the University of Memphis, I get assessed, they diagnose me with attention deficit disorder. 26 years old. I ain't no little kid, I ain't hopping up on chairs. I'm 26 years old at this point. No matter, they still pop the pills in my mouth, right? Pop the pills in my mouth, pop the pills in my mouth, right? I start getting more and more side effects. I'm like depressed, happy, sad, crying, happy, you know, frustrated. I'm all over the place emotionally. Right? Doesn't look good. I'm like, what, 200 some odd pounds? Well, I look like crying for no reason. You know? So I sit here, I, I go through all this stuff. Finally, I, I quit the medication. I'm lost. I don't know what to do with this. School tells me, look, we look at your training. You know, every time when you get ready to graduate, what they do in college is they evaluate your transcripts. And they say, have you met all the, the credentials to get the degree? They evaluate my transcripts. They say, here's your transcript from Xavier University. Here's your transcript from the University of Tennessee Health Science Center. We see what you did here. We see what you attempted to do here. It doesn't combine to equal a degree. You don't have enough. You, you're missing some stuff. You got gaps in your learning according to on paper. We don't know what you know up here. We just know on paper you missed some courses. Plus, we got reports from your preceptors that say you're impulsive, you know, you're, you're, you're irritable at times, you don't sit still. We're kind of concerned we should let you in the profession. So they dismiss me. So here I am, I've got five months till graduation. I'm getting married in four months. And I have no career. I've been diagnosed with a condition that obviously has no help for me because I can't take medication. Because the medication gave me the side effects, right? Great story. Everybody's here with me. I see everybody like, what did he do? Uh, uh, uh. Here's what happened. Out of all of that, I end up going to Sylvan Learning Center. 26 years old. I sit down to Sylvan. I say, look, you know, I'm struggling academically. I don't know what to do. Blah, 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 blah. What should I do? They say, why don't you take these courses? We'll give you an assessment. We'll see what you need. They gave me the assessment, found out that, one, my best time to study it's from 4 a.m. to 10 a.m. Well, I'm sorry, 4 a.m. to 2 p.m. is my best time to study and work. I didn't know you could find that out, but they assessed me, and that's what I found out. So here I am, all the way through college, staying up to 2 a.m., and I really should have been getting up at 2 a.m. How does that affect you mentally? Well, obviously, I'm tired. And then I try to push through, get four hours of sleep, wake up for an eight-hour exam, and do, well, I'm going to fail that. My mind's still like, what are we doing? That's me. I got to learn me. Other thing they taught me, how to read a textbook, how to take good notes, um, how, to, how to look at a, a table of contents and assess what chapters are worth reading and what chapters you should just skip over. All this stuff that I never knew before. We graduated from one of the best high schools in the city of Chicago, so there's no slide on them. 
I went to one of the best undergrad schools in the, in the HBCUs bracket under the country, in the country, Zach University in, of Louisiana. It was no slide on them. It was just skills I had never picked up before. In fact, the only reason why my wife had those skills was because her parents bought her a DVD called Where There's a Will, There's an A, and they taught all that stuff. You remember that? You ever heard of that? Mm -hmm. It's called Where There's a Will, There's an A. Bought her the DVD. See, it was a VHS back then. So they bought her the VHS. Y'all ain't got to laugh. They bought her the VHS. She looked at it, did well, got the knowledge base. Now, she did well in pharmacy school. I struggled. So I got these skills. I went back to school. I ended up getting an MBA in healthcare management. Blew the program out of the water because I got these skills in that, right? While I'm doing all this, I'm teaching in, 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 in proprietary colleges and I'm teaching pharmacy. Like, man, I got to get back to pharmacy, so I got these new skills I got to try out, right? Game ain't ready for me. I'm, I'm ready to blow this thing out the water now. Got all these skills I'm ready to put in the pharmacy game. I get one more shot. 2009, Union University, Jackson, Tennessee, sends me a note. Says, we want to invite you for an interview. We, um, we want to see what you're about. We're, can, we're, we're interested to hear how this got started in 1999, and here it is, 2009, 10 years later, you're still trying to be a pharmacist. We want to hear this story. So I, I humbly go to before the board at Jackson, Tennessee, and I tell my story. And I, the same story I just told you guys. And by the time I tell the story, I am literally crying in front of these people. Not because I'm begging them for an opportunity, because to me, I never thought I'd ever have an opportunity. Never thought I'd have an opportunity again. Went back, heard from them, and said, Mr. Tolbert, we want to accept you, however. We want to make sure that your, your issues are good as far as academics. Take some courses, come back to us, we'll admit you. I never went. I never went. You know why? Because it, it became a point where I had to ask myself a tough question. And that tough question is, is do I want to finish pharmacy just to say I finished, or do I really want to be a pharmacist? I have to ask myself, inside of me, what's my gift? What am I good at? What do I do? What would I wake up every day and not even feel like I'm working? Like, what, what would make me wake up every day? Y'all ever watch the show Martin? What would make me wake up every day and feel like Tom? Like, I ain't got no job. Every day I wake up like, man, you know where I work. And people looking at me like, you ain't got no job. You're too happy. You're too excited about life. You're, you're too driven. You ain't got no job. That's what do I want to do to get there. And I, I looked deep inside of me and found out that it wasn't far. It wasn't far. Pays well, it wasn't fun. Sounds good, people call you doctor, what fun. So needless to say, I ended up, again, teaching in cool schools like high tech and whatnot. I ended up losing my job in 2009. Struggled for a long period of time. Ended up working for a nonprofit agency. Finally figured out my gift is to do exactly what I'm doing right now. To empower anybody I can to help them figure out how to reach their dream. How does that sound? The guy who never technically reached his dream gets the opportunity to look in the eyes like yours and tell you how to reach yours. Wow. That's amazing, man. That a person who was expected to be the least can now stand in front of you and tell you the possibility of greatness. I don't sell anything. I don't have anything to say. At the end of my talk today, I'm not going to say all you got to do is sign here and pay me $19.95 for shipping and handling. That's not going to happen. The only thing I have is this for you guys, man. You are absolutely nothing without an education. I don't care what the, the job market tells you. I don't care what your friends or peers may tell you. You are absolutely nothing without an education. High school is just the beginning. People are going to celebrate you guys. They're going to think you are the greatest person on earth. And at the end of the day, you need to say, thank you. Excuse me, i got to go finish. Whether your education is college or whether it's in the military, whether you go to a trade school, whether you go into whatever, whether you go get a, a cert for certificate, whether you go get a, a certification, whether you go get a plaque that says he or she did X. 
You got to go further than where you are now. You have to be a lifetime learner. Even if your school is the school, the, the University of My Couch and Living Room University, and you are going to the library, picking up books, bringing them back to the crib, and studying with nobody's help but your own, it is you proving that you are a lifelong learner. That's my journey. That, that's what I've been on. The fact that I finished two degrees gave me the opportunity to get some good jobs. But it also gave me some life experience that it did that. Had I never left the south side of Chicago and went on this journey outside of the south side of Chicago, outside of the state of Illinois, I've been back to Chicago since 17. I've lived outside of where I grew up since I was 17 years old. And let me tell you, it has made me the greatest and I, I cannot think of me being a better man than that experience of getting up out of what you're familiar with and getting away from what you're comfortable with and going into an environment where you will now be who you're destined to be. I don't know, did I do what, did I, do what I was supposed to do today?